Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, June Planning Committee. Um, first of all, we start the meeting and we proceeded by a public session. We do have one person waiting to speak. speak. Um, Steve Green. Good evening, Steve. Oh. <laughs> we have as long as we need, up to 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this one is in reference which raised its head for me or about, which um, never raised its head again. So it's over in Pleasant Gary, his block in uh, Pleasant, obviously. Catherine's done a very good report. Uh, she picked out the nuts and bolts of where it all fell apart last time. And she picked out a few more nuts and bolts of where it's going to fall apart this time. I've also noted a few things from the architect's uh, plan bit, where they go into. Um, can you do a better point? Yes, I can. Um, Basically, demolishing garages, change of use. Um, last time it was going to be two semi detached, uh, which was going to be four properties. This time it's going to be semi detached, two properties in the bottom below. Um, in theory, nothing's changed. Absolutely nothing of the area has changed. Uh, the size hasn't grown anymore. It hasn't shrunk. It hasn't done anything. Um, so basically, there isn't a lot of change in that respect. The, there is an overgrown area behind it, which basically on the uh, architect bits and pieces said it's currently inaccessible. Well, um, I'll come on with it in a minute. It basically was accessible actually because builders got them behind it, but they had to access through a tenant scoring. So it is accessible. Um, it's inaccessible because we actually cut it because they never cut it in its four years. So that's that one part. Um, access across the path for the, uh, to the uh, wooded part is going to be still maintained. That's good. Um, the ecology report, which basically I think it's still the same report from 2019, where it says there's no bats, birds, the SRRP birds, the Ted Fred, I keep the birds, uh, which are around there. But when they say there's no bats and they actually looked in the garage, well, I'm quite amused that they actually looked in the garage because they haven't looked in mine, which is number eight. They've never asked to actually look inside of it for anything. Um, and if they could, if that apologist would go out there at 10 o'clock at night, he will find the bats. If he's going to go out there in the daytime or in some kind of the birds are singing, he can find the bats. Um, so, yeah, um, that's that part. Uh, I also note the Leyland Eye Hedge, which basically is the big uh, problematic starter on uh, number 38 property, whereby it needs cutting back. Yes, it does need cutting back, it has grown over its boundary. I quite agree. But where it says in repeated times in these reports where it's going to be removal, the uh, person that owned number 38, especially the son, um, I had a word with him the other day and he said basically, well, if anything's happening, it hasn't come to me yet. And certainly it hasn't got to go through dad who is in the 80s, I believe, because last time he was hassled. I don't know if he was actually hassled by Mr. Fairlight, um, or actually at that time it was being aged here. So um, where they say it's going to be removal, Nobody's actually said, yeah, you can remove it, not from that property, number not already yet. <laughs> um, the um, traffic guy has done his report, which you'll all note on there because I looked on South and Fox Planning. He still wants 4.1 meters, which he can get the hedges cut back potentially. Um, but he's also looking for any uh, building starts whatsoever for parking restrictions opposite that entrance in the front present. Now, again, they've done these uh, sophisticated parking. Surveys. I'm quite amused, which I have never got the answer. I've never asked Kathy actually whether they actually take those parking surveys from both sides of the street or whether they just go from one side of the street. And most of us in the room present do park sensibly and we park one side of the street. But if you were to park legally, you could say legally loosely, but if you were to park one side of the street, well, you'd be probably put it to get possibly two wheelbarrows up through that with a vehicle and a fire engine. Um, there are times when a fire engine does come up there, and it wasn't so long ago that another fire engine did come up there about a month ago, and he had to reverse the way back out again because he couldn't get up the river. So he then had to come in the other end of, over in present. So um, some of the pictures they've actually got on here are old pictures, but Catherine has updated um, to newer pictures. Where it's got a garage on the um, blue door ones, which is on page, and I haven't got page number here actually, but um, 
there were the old town council uh, facilities back in Tour Lord, I believe, in the past, etc. And there was a wash basin in there and a loo in there. Well, those garages, strangely enough, once the last proposal got kicked into touch from 2020 to 21 by the planning inspector, uh, Fair High had since been in there, and uh, that was in early last year, and actually developed those garages, whereby they've uh, turned them completely into training rooms. So again, I believe that possibly somebody at Fairlight hasn't actually said to one department to the other, we've done this, but the development department are actually saying, we're going to do this. So um, I think it could be that. But uh, yeah, they have obviously spent money in there, they uh, did whatever, and they turned it into a training room and um, insulated it, lit it, emergency lighting, put a loo in, water basin, sink unit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the uh, I do know the actual concept of the area runs very close to the conservation area. Public access can be maintained, that's good. Um, although I think possibly what they have also put in for this time instead of social housing, which it wasn't last time, it's going to be affordable. Now it can be actual on the market properties, which I think could possibly cause a little bit more of a nightmare because people are going to be saying, and we don't want people walking past there, XYZ, um, to actually maintain in that facility to the wooded area. I can just see it coming off. Um, it is moved quite, uh, what can I say, extensively by some youngsters. And the um, wooded area is used extensively by some youngsters. Um, so that's that part. Um, going on to the next. Um, the, 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 the basically said the uh, land behind the garage is inaccessible and it's grown. Yes, it is, but it never gets cut. Simple as that. Um, it goes on to say provide development, um, we're reducing lots of the world parking, planning constraints. There are some, which obviously you probably have looked to earlier on. No TPO, um, it uh, it should be regarded as former principal with decision making for the development plan. Um, parking and actually going to get used by other people. Obviously, along the crescent, uh, this afternoon there were four in there that were actually parked out over the weekend, which was Sunday when I do believe it was. There must have been six in there because there were people actually had parked across the um, it was accessible still, but there were people that actually parked without actually parking in parking areas. Uh, we're still in the same situation pretty much with the uh, summer house, which I think the numerous correspondence was these. It still said it's going to be a cycle shop. Um, the heritage officer picked up several things last time. Uh, currently, there are existing under, underground sewers running through the centre of the access. Uh, they must have tapped in somewhere for that actual loo that went uh, back in last year, although it was already in there because there was a loo in there before. So all that they actually did was actually um, just redo what they actually had. Um, looks like some of the uh, Restrictions on the actual meterage from direction from property to property. Some of them are a little bit tight. In fact, they've written there on one of the reports for me, it's actually backwards. It's got 11.5 running towards number 38. And in fact, it should be 11.5 running towards number 36. I love it, but they will be actually wrong. Uh, the experience looks a bit better than I'd say, something like that. The colour of being, well, I'm quite confused on that. Because basically, as I said before in the lab, before I'm actually the town council, and I also noted on Fox Council how that guy from Ecology could actually see what was actually happening in that area because he took his photograph from number 34's back garden, peered over the top of a fence, and looked at that squirrel behind those areas. So I'm quite confused that he can make his report. Um, refuse, well, that's another little nightmare, I do believe, because basically they're saying it's going to be a seven and a half ton vehicle. Um, I do believe there is no such thing as an impact on the airport in existence, not for refuge whatsoever. Um, even I myself, I've got a transit van, and yes, as it sounds at the moment in time, the vehicles that are opposite that entrance of, the, of that access to that area, you can just about get around it because there is a lamppost on the, if you're coming out, there's a lamppost on the uh, right hand side, but you can just about do it, you can just don't miss the guard in front of you, and that's pretty tight. So, yes, they say they're going to sweep the path back, uh, the curve back, and make them wider. Yes, they're going to cut the hedge back or remove it, um, as the case might be. Um, 
Steve, you've got two minutes. So pretty much, that's about it. I am just about done, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Let's just see if anyone's got any questions for you. Anybody? No, Steve, we remember your last uh, thought on this uh, previous application. Thank you very much for what you're doing. You're welcome to remain if you want to hear. It, it won't be coming up for a little while yet, but uh, I'm sure the members agree that we can move back to the first planning applications and we get to those. Um, right, if we could just return to business. Um, first of all, election of chair to elect a chairman of the planning committee for 2023 and 2024. Do I need to stand down or? No. I'll be asked first. <laughs> you were second. No, you were second. You were second, really. Okay. Councillor Dolly. I nominate you, Councillor Cole, for chair. Thank you. Yeah, I accept that. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? In favour. In favour. <laughs> All those in favour? You can vote for yourself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's no amount. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And four. Um, item two, to elect the vice chairman of the planning committee 2023 20, 24. Robin? <laughs> no, okay. you're first. I'd, I'd like to um, propose Councillor Anthony Ralph. You accept the nomination? Thank you. I'm not seconded. Seconded. That. seconded. All those in favour? Any other nominations? Oh, sorry. No, any other nominations? Apologies. No, no. Let's make it unanimous. <laughs> yeah, Congratulations, Anthony. I've, I've never met this any other nomination. <laughs> um, in that case, the status quo is continued. Thank you for your confidence in both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you for both. Members are asked to receive apologies for absence form. Councillor Harbour, Councillor Tran, Councillor Willett. Thank you very much. Um, any declarations of interest, personal digital interest on the consideration? Robert? It's my usual one, as I can't comment on the planning application, but on the faint possibility <laughs> that we may have one day have an application to determine in the planning. <laughs> um, I, it's an outside chance. <laughs> uh, we haven't had one since 2020, but you never know. <laughs> Just you. when I talk about I mean, they'll have an application. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's noted. Um, minutes of the last meeting, which was on the 15th of May. Maybe take those as a true record. Yeah. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right, over the page. Terms of the reference. Um, this is just the annual. Noted. 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 And then item seven, Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, Vailadog Plan, Buckinghamshire Local Plan to receive any updates. I spoke to Sheila earlier and she said we've got nothing. She has nothing. Robin? Just Chairman, I think we will um, talk. Um, it might be worth touching base on Buckinghamshire Council on the relevance of the 2021 environmental um, legislation on planning. Um, the reason I say that is I think from my sources that it will play quite a bearing in the way planning is done going forward. And the thing with the legislation, well, it's, it allows designation of areas of ground for environmental benefits. What I am understanding is that there's several ways that the legislation works um, in the sense that they may be able to allocate areas in Buckinghamshire and they may, the developers may at the last resort be able to offset areas, but um, and um, and they may be able to purchase areas. So I think that we perhaps would be wise when we're drafting a, the Buckinghamshire plan, the code. Continent is all co well, anyway, um, of that um, cogent or well, whatever it is of that um, of that legislation because we'll miss an opportunity to make environmental decisions about areas of which um, we can improve and developers are going to be bound by it. So and it's drifting its way through. So it seems to be current, and we don't really want to draft a plan, Chairman, that and then find which we've done it. I think it's an officer to chairman to 
um, fan group situation. Because though what I said is absolutely correct, I'm not an officer. But we are obviously, of course, employing consultants, and they, they are advising us about all, all the current legislation. Well, they work with me today. Right. Thank you. Um, Roger, have you got any advice for that? Thank you very much for the uh, that we taken on board. Yeah. If they're considering it upstairs, we ought to consider it downstairs. Good point. Um, anything else on neighbourhood plan? About Buckinghamshire plan? No? Right, item 8, North Bucks Parishes Planning Consortium. Councillor Ralph is our representative on the NBPPC. Anthony. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> uh, you may recall that there was a clash between the last meeting's timing and uh, Town Council. And in my book, Town Council always takes preference, so I didn't attend. Um, and obviously, you can see that um, Appendix B is a copy of the agenda, of the, uh, the uh, minutes, rather, of, of that meeting. Um, in general terms, it was pretty much what they tend to uh, concentrate on uh, item by item at the many of the meetings. Um, it was good to see, for example, that there is to be a replacement secretary. That's been sorted because, of mm. course, with Jeff Culverhouse dying, yeah. um, we were bereft in all senses of the word. Um, secondly, um, Graham Stewart was talking about a new uh, a, a new call for sites uh, from Buckingham Council, both Green Green Space and Brown Space, um, and there was some concern about how that might affect uh, neighbourhood plans that are being made and what have you. Um, and it's clear from what's written here that uh, they did quite a bit of talking about it, and I'm sure that we'll take account of that when we're looking at our neighbourhood neighbor plans uh, over the coming weeks and months. Um, Tim Welch suggested there might be pressure uh, along the East-West Rail Corridor uh, and the MK2050 study to influence the future development of the area, and that's perhaps something we'll keep a weather eye on as well. Um, the next thing was uh, a letter that uh, Pat Harkos, who's the, the chair of both of this and of, of Mates Morton uh, Parish Council, uh, and because there is a great keenness by the MBPPC to try and get a better relationship with Buckinghamshire Council, particularly with the planning people, but more generally. And so they're working um, on a letter um, and it will actually be sent to Rachel Shimmin, uh, the CEO of Buckingham Council, when it's ready. And uh, I, I can see from the way this was written, there was quite a bit of discussion about that. And so a redraft of the letter is going to be circulated. Um, the next interesting thing, I thought, because as you know, the Shenley Park, which is a very large development mm -hmm. right on the edge, near the bottom dump roundabout. But, um, and, and the SPD for that, there's been delays and all sorts of things, and everybody is playing tippy-toe with that. Um, uh, certainly, Grand Stewart reports that he believed that the outline planning application is going to be applied for by mm -hmm. Ross Nicholson against Buckingham Council advice. Uh, before the SPD is even adopted. And their argument is, um, I can argue it tactfully, that uh, as things go on and on, uh, they're not going to get um, their work done in the uh, sort of time frames that they're expected to, because I think they're going on to about 2033 with this project, and they want to make sure they can hit the end dates and so they're starting to whether this is a technique for pressuring people or not i don't really know but it, it's it's certainly a, an interesting idea um obviously there's other stuff here but the other only other thing and i don't know how relevant this is uh, certainly from a planning point of view i don't think it is but it's worth mentioning similar so said that um, as we know bt are phasing out the use of landline telephones and going over to void um and uh, they're, they're concerned about the uh, uh, people who are vulnerable and perhaps mm. either haven't got 
um, uh, fiber or whatever. Although I do believe BC are putting something in for people who can't um, uh, handle uh, lack of fiber. But it was something that we may, as a town council, be aware of and just remind ourselves when the relevant uh, committees are looking at these things from a welfare point of view. As I say, nothing to do with planning, I admit that. But as it is here, I thought I'd mention it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Bobby? Yeah, I was very pleased to read in the report that you actually use the right terminology for the Milton Dean thing, which is the Milton Dean Cody, because it was used in some literature, was calling it a plan. The yeah. plan has to go through submissions and be agreed. It's only a study to 2050. Yeah. And that was the outline of them possibly looking at where they would develop, to find out where they would possibly develop. But they pleased that the correct terminology was there. I was going to see whether I could get a sight of the letter to Buckinghamshire Council to improve relations, because if there's any useful words in there, I'd be able to write one myself to write the humans <laughs> and, um, and see if I could take on any of the useful combination of words in there. Um, um, but <laughs> it being jocular. But no, I, I, it's important because it was mentioned in various things that it was a plan. It was not a plan. And it's a feasibility study. I haven't looked at it when it was launched. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anthony. It's going to take those minutes as received. Thank you very much. Um, item nine, action reports. Receive action reports as per the attached list. I'll just whisk through it and then we'll come back to questions. Um, cycleway on the road, what council is actually working with town clerk? Any progress, Robin? Um, I am intensely talking with people. Um, I haven't quite got as intense as it will do. Um, but I'm waiting for them to be able to um, deliberate the information which was available and um, then I should be in a position to come back with some information and not all the actions I have taken can be spoken about, but I hope that helps. It's not meant to be um, whatever. It was meant to be practical. Thank you, that's ongoing then. Um, Lay School Medical Centre, Town Clark Letter Read Section 106 Money Status. See, has that been actually sent yet? Um, I'm not aware of that, are you? No, that's still to be done. But while we're on the subject of that, we would all be aware, no doubt, that um, the local media, Bucks, Harold Buck, Buckingham, Buckingham Advertiser, etc., reported that spring 2025 will be the opening date for Buckingham's new medical centre. This followed a meeting of the uh, Bucks Council's Health and Social Care Select Committee, which the chairman re revealed, quote unquote, Councillor Jane McBean, um, the deadline for funding had passed and the completion of the project um, had now been pushed back to March 2025 and formal notification as of April 2023, work has now restarted. The funding is in place and it's hoped to be open by spring 2025. But it's not all as it seems, I believe, Robert. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a case that I haven't seen the letter, which I think is, as it was spoke about in the meeting, we should ask to see the letter, which was quoted in the meeting. It hasn't been put into the minutes. It wasn't in the agenda at the meeting. So this letter is in the public domain, but isn't in the physical presence. Um, so that's uh, interesting. I did push a little bit further in there about elements around the, um, you will recall that in 2017, I think it was, or was it 2018, we had that, you know, take part in a study of what we needed in the town and we all took part in it. I asked when that was likely to become, um, 2019, sorry, um, that come, and that hasn't, oh, 20, no, 2020, I promise, um, that come, um, but that hasn't actually been published. And, and when I asked when the um, the impact assessment for health was going to become, the response came back that that was commercially sensitive. And both were commercially sensitive and wouldn't be able to go back into the public domain at the moment. So I don't know what was commercially sensitive about anything that one of us might have said in that consultation. I'm unsure about that. Um, and I'm also unsure about what would be conserved commercially sensitive about a health impact assessment, which is a legal requirement. But I actually asked for it in 2018 um, while I was getting working through my dates. What did happen at that meeting 
which was very interesting if you watch it. Um, um, my colleague, Councillor Stuart Wilson, who represents Wogan Bill Born End, um, he questioned them about um, facilitating primary care facilities. Um, this was, um, in, he questioned about that at the um, next meeting, which was to be correct, it was at the Buckinghamshire and um, Oxfordshire and West Berkshire Opening Street, which I was present. Um, he also questioned about um, their, the way they were going to deliver sites because, um, and, um, you know, for a local plan. And he also questioned them about what part of CCG would be providing medical facilities and support um, for people going forward. Now, he, he quoted natural figures in his own area, which really mirror some of the issues we've got here. Um, what they didn't come back was, um, and how the ICB play a part in it, and what part GP play in it. What didn't come back was they said they were going to work to a matrix of funding. Well, anyone who's been to a local authority meeting, when he, he's not on, on it. So when he asks a question, he can't necessarily... Um, when they refer to the matrix. So I went back and asked them, can we have a copy of the matrix on how you work out the funding? What it appeared listening to the um, people representing the Art Interconnect Care Board, what it appeared is that um, there is like a section of things you have. And then from that, it, it spirals down to whether you get funded or whether they put in. What they were unclear about um, is thereafter, is their part in um, how they were, they knew that they've got to deliver more healthcare period. It fits into the back of the So if you've got time, and you've got the patience, go and watch the meeting. And if you don't want to look at anything I said, please go and look at what Councillor Stuart Wilson said, because it was um, very um, carefully and precisely delivered and, um, and got us some way to where we were getting which is why the chairman mentioned the previous meeting, which is quite useful to be in all these places. But um, I do think one of the things we should do, as it's on the action list, is as um, Mr. Gabriel, as Dr. Gabriel spoke at the meeting and gave his reference to it, and it's in the public domain, I don't think it's unfair of us to ask him um, to write to us about what his position is in it, because he did then question what the chairman said, and she said that they'd had a conversation beforehand. So um, I think we should get that in our hands, um, because we obviously want success in all this, and we need to understand when success will be and if it will happen within our lifetime, don't we? Yeah, this, um, is, this isn't really the province, of course, of the planning committee. We're here no. about Section 106 agreements, but I just raised... No, but it's connected to the Section 106 yeah. agreement, which would have not brought forward. It's funny listening to the conversation about the clinical commissioning board. There was no mention of Section 106, was there? No. Meeting. no. Um, the, the big problem is I've got people coming up to me saying, isn't it great that centres can be open during 2025? I, I can't be responsible for other people's statements. <laughs> Anyone else? Any comments on that at the moment? Plus we can move on then. On page um, two of the agenda, um, section 106, the town clerk has written to our six shire councillors asking to attend a meeting before the one of the, plan, the July planning committee um, to talk about how section 106 matters are negotiated. I believe you had a couple of replies. Well, I have two apologies. Two apologies at the moment, right? Clark, so yeah. We'll have to wait for us to come in. Um, New reports, loose manhole cover on bypass, it's still loose as of this morning. Hilltop Avenue, which is the bus route, closed about warning for emergency repairs. Uh, that has been taken up now with uh, traffic order people. They closed it at 10 minutes notice, giving no notice to residents of Page Hill or to the bus companies. So, mm -hmm. Robin. On the loose, um, the loose, um, well, what the permanent feature now, of the loose um, uh, manhole cover, which is now a musical percussion to the community and plays throughout the evening. Um, it's not actually in key, that's the problem. Um, the, my correspondence started with it in March, and we're now 
in June and it's saying that we are waiting to be able to put a, um, what was the word, the right sort of traffic order in to be able to um, do it. What it doesn't say is it recognises that it's also day and night. Um, um, there's two sorts of the day. So obviously they're only working on daytime. And, and, and if I was to say anything, I thought that when we had the new contract in, Buckinghamshire Council, all these things were going to be so much better and done so much clearer. Without going into other areas, this is a case where it hasn't happened very quickly. Um, it is really annoying the residents and and they stop me outside my house and I give them updates and show them the correspondence. But they're running out of, of faith and trust with it, to be honest, Chairman. So I don't know what we can do apart from it, apart from I would suggest that um, perhaps we should do a press release about that it's in the wrong key um, for Buckingham and perhaps they should um, do something about it um, because of lightness and correspondence to each other. Roger. So can I continue the traffic call because it's a repair? It's the, um, if you go, um, Further down the London Road, yeah, where the man of colour was doing the same thing, wasn't it? Yeah, BT1, yeah, and they repaired that through. I years. reported that, yeah, they did it. Well, I it's think it's team man on, they do it almost straight away. I think it's to do with the fact that it's on the roundabout and it needs a three way um traffic um, movement um on it because you, you, you've got a traffic diversion around the roundabout, you get the two streams of traffic around and the two streams of traffic around. And clearly, they can't remember doing that when they built it. Um, I mean, it was quite a long time ago. Maybe the officers weren't in place when they built it, put it together. Um, so I don't know what we do with that. I would suggest that um, maybe we need to um, put it onto our either our list of press releases or I carry on writing to them. It's not fair on the local area technicians, to be frankly honest, because they don't have the money or the decision do it, but I do think it's becoming, if somebody goes down it, which I've said to them, and I hear that stop ringing one night, and I then have to go up from my house around the corner to find them, I should be less than amused if somebody has an accident. And having ridden a motorcycle in my past, um, not very successfully, I must say, it would it would not be um, particularly great for a motorcyclist in any shape or form if they hit that with the wrong animal. May I suggest that before we do, Press releases. We have one more go. Just really, really. I'm going to press on. Them. I'm going to do that on the 26th. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only other matter: zero the tree. Town clerk is encroaching. Now can BHIB about tree insurance? We've already contacted AXA and MFU. No response. Finally, um, we approach Environment to ask about the ownership of the mobile warning panels around the bypass and on the A422. Mm -hmm. A421, the reporters are now in the ownership of HS2, not BC highways, but that still doesn't explain why they haven't been illuminated yeah. since before Christmas. Mm. Lisa. Thank you. And um, through you, can we see if there's any update on the Western um, archaeology? What I can tell you is that the last pretty much where we were, we were waiting for them to go out and um, on my loop of things to do, mm -hmm. and it's coming to the top of my loop of things to do. And that they said they were hoping to get the um, a position where they actually start examining some of the archaeology and get back. What they haven't said to me is that they actually got to that position, they were getting to that position. So I think it's a worthy question, and um, you're absolutely right. I need to go back and follow it up. But I'm trying to do it on a sort of six week loop rather than a monthly loop. Because it looks better than um, because the, the archaeology are really lovely people and they're a very small team. And um, I think, though I'm grumpy, they worked in their limited hours that they're allowed to work um, quite successfully for it, maybe because I'm such a, a joy in their life um, and ask them so often. Um, I do sometimes go in there to talk to them um, and they're all very pleased about that. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the action reports? No, we can move on to um, uh, 
line two, which is to receive a response from Mr. Van Brick. That is Appendix D. Um, do I want to comment on that, or do we accept what he says? Mm -hmm. Basically, answering why, you know, what what the choice is about whether something goes to strategic or, or the North Bucks Area Committee or is taken as a delegated decision. I mean, it's generally in line with what the Constitution says. But I mean, I think at some point there has to be a a real question put to them, and maybe we're not there yet. But if we've managed to get through um, all of 2023 without one application in Buckingham ever going to a local area planning committee. And we've got numerous other applications of various uh, stress and whatever, none of them go to a planning committee. I think that we need to actually ask them whether the constitution is really working yeah. um, in the best interest of the public or whether it's working in the interest of the economics of doing planning. Is it fit for purpose? Well. I am really worried as a local member. I mean, I, I, it seems that um, the only application we did here was when he made Morton, uh, which wasn't in Buckingham. And Buckingham yeah. has got about 17,000 people. Um, and not to have one application in Buckingham, yeah. now it has quite a few and whatever. I'm not, I, it would be, just be nice to once in a while, have, at least before the election of 2025, <laughs> to have had the opportunity to determine one application, <laughs> which wasn't determined by the chairman and the, um, officer. And, and the officer and whatever. Because yeah. I'm sure that I was elected on the same basis and, um, and, yeah. and by the electorate. Um, so I, I think we do need to wait to, I think we just need to put it on an agenda to yeah. discuss it. I don't think we can make a point tonight, but I do think that you raise a really good point. Yeah, this, this is a response to a letter from town. Yeah, I, 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 so what we can do, Perhaps the next planning committee will just part of the response. Yeah, uh, yeah and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. let's talk about how that response should go rather yeah, than exactly. My thank you, Robin. Thank you. Um, so we, that's noted, is it? Yeah, yeah. noted. Yeah. Yeah. And similarly, um, receive a response from highways about the A422 slip road and other highways matters in our answer to questions posed by Councillor Stutchbury. That is some um, item. Me, I think you should read that um, through the chairman because it's 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 um though it may be technically um, accurate, it, it's quite concerning in the sense that it reinforces um, the difference between what the town council's aspirations are to do with the slope down the side of it, and I think if I was to ask through the chairman to do something else. Um, if you remember, we and it is a planning issue. If they're going to commit funds to doing that roundabout, what they're doing, we had um, one of our previous councillors from another parish come and explain to us about the roundabout. And if they're going to spend a fortune on that roundabout, it would be logical to put the, the diverter in from Page mm. Hill to send the water across to um, the other side of the road rather than not do it now. Um, I think we should probably agenda that for another meeting, but get all the information related to it so that we actually get that precise chairman. Yeah. Because if they are going to go and use the section 106, it was large portions of the money um, supported by the Buckinghamshire transport plan, which in its um, aspirations before the district council's um, local plan said it was in favour of Western bypass. I still think it says it in the Buckinghamshire transport plan that it's in favour of Western bypass, um, and which is um, was I think our aspiration, wasn't it? Um, so I think that can I ask for you, Chairman, that we agenda that something to match with what we had from the um, said councillor who came to talk to us, who has to do with the Canal Society, um, Buckinghamshire, so that we actually can word it because he had some information brought to an environment committee, which I think has got everything mm -hmm. to do with this roundabout. They're going to spend a fortune on that roundabout. They might as well solve the um, yeah. flooding issues and try and sort some of that out at the same time if we're not going to get what we want. You remember many years ago that we solved the Tesco's roundabout by suggesting that they all put a camera down there. Yeah. And then yeah. surprise and surprise that when we got a camera put down there, the drain was collapsed. And once they put a new drain in, 
Yeah, surprise, surprise, it didn't flood anymore. <laughs> um, and um, but so you can solve these issues, and it seems if they're going to spend the fortune on that roundabout, we'll, we'll never get it done at all. Um, Thank you. Um, I just find it amusing that as they talk about the town service network is experiencing issues with capacity and delays, and yet we're never we're told anything about Morton Road developments or Maze Morton development. The um, old jail roundabout is absolutely fine. There's no problem through town. No. Mm. So it's like one department aren't talking to the other department and they're talking about the same area, the, pen, the town centre. Uh, I just find it amusing well, that we do have a problem, but we don't have a problem. I yeah. do think that we should keep this letter on file for the very point that you say, okay, Councilman, right because um, when they vote that there isn't a problem, we can quote that you told them there was a problem. Yeah. In which case, um, it's always good to have their own words. Um, so maybe we should keep that in the chairman's knowledge and yeah. in the committee's knowledge because we're going to have this with any other yeah. Night, Anya. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're going to have this again and again and again. Mm. The letter goes on to say towards the end, the cost of the slip road project had been estimated at £450,000. That was in steam prices yeah. seven years ago now. We know that would change. Um, that would have been supported by the Morton Road Phase 3 application, which at that time was refused by the Secretary of State after appeal. Also, I noticed in the letter they, they misspelled Rad, they put Radcliffe, not Radcliffe. And the plan is to uh, is to uh, dual the A421 between the Radcliffe Road roundabout and the A421 Bletchley Road roundabout. So, I, I think that would be something I would ask if it was considering. And um, we are still waiting for the outcome of the A421 study. Yeah. And they, I asked them in council whether they predetermined the study by Broom Section 106. And they assured me they hadn't. But the £800,000, I think it was, which is they're taking out of OSU Wave Section 106, if I'm corrected, is quite a large portion of money um, um, to, to pay for jewelry. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I mean, if they do, Unfortunately, jewel that road part those residents. Um, the children in those you way will then have to learn how to cross the motorway, won't they? Um, but as the chairman of the planning committee and the North Planning Committee you voted in favour of it being built, said that they will at least be able to walk across another pelican crossing on the Gorkut Road. But that'd be a very large pelican crossing, won't it? With two pelican crossings to get to school. And it's all in the public domain. Yeah. Um, so following council start with suggestion, should we keep this on? Um, item on the action list as, as a standard. I think it needs to order, yeah. we won't lose sight of that letter then. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I think that covers everything in action reports. Planning applications, next schedule Buckinghamshire Council, Northern Buckinghamshire Planning Area Committees on Wednesday, 28th of June, 26th of July, Strategics on Thursday, 6th of July and 3rd of August. I'll just check 2023. I don't know. So we don't know at this point if everything's coming up from us yet. Obviously, one of the outstanding ones is going to be the land on London Road. Um, thank you. Um, planning applications. Steve Pringle has been patiently waiting there. So, a member's agreement could be move item seven yeah. to the first one. Yeah. It's the garage yeah. um, site of Oval Crescent. So, this is the demolition of existing garages and erection of three dwelling and associated parking. Uh, Note on the website on the portal that the local the lead local flood area uh, is objecting to the lack of subs information. Um, the minimum parking spaces they're going to provide on this development are below the, those of the minimum size of Buckinghamshire Council standards. They're 4.4 metres by 2.8. Minimum standard is five meters by 2.8. Um, you all have seen Catherine's report. Thank you for that, Catherine, and the photographs. You've also heard of what Steve said tonight. Um, how do members feel about this application? Anthony. Yeah, just a, a thought. We recently had an application uh, for change of use of Stoneley. Uh, house hotel mm -hmm. which was rejected really by the commercial people saying that it should not be turned from a commercial property into um, a dwelling 
Mm. And so in my mind, that is set a precedent. Mm. And here we have what is, to all intents and purposes, currently commercial properties having been refurbished recently and being used in a commercial sense. And surely we can't now turn it into a change of use to domestic <laughs> for 12 months, is it, until they've advertised it for that period. Nice. Good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, one thing that stands out here as well is that um, this application, as you know, comes from Fairhive poems. Mm -hmm. And although Fairhive, who's our local housing association, reporting there is still a large demand for social housing, these three properties will be put on the private market. They're not for social housing. So yeah, that's something else to consider. Indeed. Lisa. Thank you. Um, I noticed the bit at the end of page 33 of 70, where um, Catherine's put at the very bottom that the um, bins are less likely to be taken back to from the curb side to the house. Mm -hmm. I could say that they put, they won't be taken back because even in Linden Village, um, it's a map of meters from the road to our front doors and they're not brought back to ours. So they're, they're not going to be taken back to these guys. They're going to be left on no. the curb. Yeah. And that's going to cause major issues. Yeah, this is one of the things that also stands out. Catherine's pointed out plot three, which is the bungalow quite likely to be occupied by someone disabled, mm -hmm. 56 metres, in fact, slightly more, you said today. Um, well, yes, because um, as Buckinghamshire don't have a seven and a half ton wagon, yeah. the smallest they have is 12, and that mm -hmm. is only one for the whole of the north of the county, for villages with really narrow roads. Yeah. Um, they're going to probably say, bins will have to be left on open present. Mm -hmm. So that's an extra meterage to back and forth for somebody who's disabled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any, Roger, has the Buckingham Society got to do all this? Um, apologies to the objector. Um, we don't object to it in principle. Um, no, just what I think. Providing it implies all the relevant policies, which you mentioned on parking, which obviously doesn't. Um, refuse, because I don't, I think that will they take that small truck that they use for the conservation? Well, Pat McCormick is it's no, there. because it's pretty well tied up doing the whole village. That's what I mean. So they're not so. The great what concerns me is that waste and recycling haven't posted the response yet. Uh, I, I, think, um, I think that's because they haven't actually asked. No, I suspect that, as I say, in land use terms, we have got objects, but we might be there. All the other ones. I, I, I gave the man a wee nudge with my elbow. Right. I gave the man a wee nudge with my elbow, saying it would be really helpful for me. If you can produce reasoned response to this, mm -hmm. we haven't got the plan. Two distances are a lot longer than our standard. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. to so, not respond no. is yes. concerning. No, so that's it. I mean, yeah, I can't, 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 but I have discovered that the whole distance can be calculated. If, if there is a bin area on the plans, as there is for all of these, and the disabled one can have to go right round to shed to the other side of it because there's no path, um, you can count the whole distance from there. It doesn't have to come from your garden bit. So mm -hmm. those where they, they haven't put the things behind the gate. Close to, right. or just downright difficult. I mean, mm. you have provided a hard path to where you put your bins. That's not good. So the previous application for this was obviously back in June 2021 when it went to appeal. The inspector dismissed the appeal, uh, mainly on the grounds of the effect on the setting of the listed summer house and its original Parkland surroundings. As Catherine points out here, the uh, 
the bungalow will be slightly less overbearing onto the summer house, but we still feel that this is not appropriate development for this site. Yeah. yeah. Members generally agree with that? Yeah, yeah. definitely. In that case, following precedent, I, I propose that we continue to oppose this application on all the grounds we've discussed tonight. Seconded by Anthony. Thank you very much. If anyone has anything else to say, otherwise, all those in favour? That's unanimous, except for Robin, who. Um, just before we move on, Chairman, is this an application that you should ask to be called in? Sense that I do feel it significant that's the um, chance that it should be called in the committee. In this case, that might be a wise thing to. Yeah. Take. yeah. Members minded to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Definitely. So, all those in favour? We are set. Gordon, thank you. We can do it as a town council ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Steve, for. Attend tonight. Have you heard yeah. what you wanted to hear? Yes. Um, it's pretty much like a hornet's nest in a, mm -hmm. in a honey pot, really. Um, that area is just uh, the close proximity to everyone. And um, see where it goes. Good. Thank you very much for your efforts. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Um, back to number one then. Mm -hmm. yes. Number four, West Street, something of a computer application. This is for change to a Greek restaurant. Um, a lot of what we wanted has been answered in terms of signage. It's not all perfect yet. Uh, but the main, con main problems Daphne has outlined in her report, most particularly, um, there's no off street parking, even though the applicant claims that is. Um, it's not wheelchair friendly with yeah. the front steps, double front steps. The toilet inside. And the toilet inside, yeah. This, they ha have a skip which they're proposing to put at the back of the property, but it's not their prop not their land. Um, and the menu board, they're saying the height is 2.5 metres, which is. We have a late email on that. The officer clearly doesn't think that 2.5 metres is correct. He's going for 1.5 metres. Okay. And he has confirmation that instead of two millimetre letters on it, they're now going to be two centimetres high, which would be legible at 1.5 metres. <laughs> two millimetres wouldn't be at 2.5. Yeah, we were discussing that this afternoon, the meeting this afternoon. Um, so he's beginning to nibble away at it and get yeah. it. But, um, but members may still feel there's a lot of unanswered questions there, and we need more information before we can reach a decision. Roger? Yeah, the um, document is a the object, speaking a lot of the groups that Catherine was saying. The one thing that I don't know about the is that the basis on we think goes up a lot of heritage, um, and it's looks rather large, and also the, the projected is already regulated, isn't it? It doesn't impact on the heritage of the building, and we don't think it's suitable for the building that it's on, or just going to get old. It should be, if they're going to have an external side of our view, they should get some of the hands on it, and not a made up round thing that's significantly from the inside. The Basically, heritage yeah. officer is asking that they utilize the existing bracket. So that no further holes are put in the fabric, which is a fair point. She's not so bothered about it being circular, but if it's going to be lit in any way, it will make more holes in the walls, and she's not happy about it. No, I think it's just she does seem to be on the ball, the heritage lady. Yeah. Um, she she says it's conservation area. We go for hanging signs. We prefer painted wood, but we'd settle for this plastic disc if you this. Yeah, we think that it was a very small building. And she also says that she doesn't want um, any any of the heritage brickwork covered. So they've got to stick with the existing fascia board sign, and that's why it's shorter than it was. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Lisa. Thank you. Who um the previous people that um used the property, what did they use? Um for their emergency exit, because on 2470, 
Catherine's put that it can't the the area um can't be used as an emergency exit just as I wondered what did the previous people use for emergency? Oh, hold on. So uh, out of, there isn't anywhere any any way out of the back garden. There's no yet where it shows an opening, there's no opening there. So the only way you could get out, you could go out into the back garden, you could go out the front. You can't get out of the back garden into anywhere else unless you climb the wall. That's worrying. That's really worrying. Yeah. Because the kitchen's at the front, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the kitchen's, yes. It, yeah. yeah. So if there's a fire in the kitchen, then you couldn't pass the front, you could get up by then. But there was a fire within the front that you wouldn't be able to exit at the back and go. Right. That's so and so. Thank you. So there's part of the problems there, aren't there, as, as we've seen, you yeah. know, particularly the parking. If people, it's going to be a take, sorry, never, yeah, it's going to be a takeaway as well. Then people want that to stop on the street there. Yeah. And that's a pinch point there on West Street, of course, as yeah. we all know. Quite often, two cars can't pass each other. In fact, somebody has to give way. Um, and if they're going to eat in there and decide to leave the car on the double line, then you've got even bigger problems. Yeah. Um, our response last time was that we had no objection in principle, but we need a lot of things clarified. I think we're very much in the same situation, aren't we? So if I propose that we continue to um, we continue to say we can't make a decision until these matters, outstanding matters, are sorted out, Catherine obviously knows them all. So I propose that. Yes, yes. Yeah. I just have a question. Could it just back to number four, um, the first four on here? So is your response going to be an overarching response to, to all four? Yeah, because we can consider them all together. Yeah, I didn't know whether well, you, there were any parts of it. I'm actually that going, you could going to divide it into two sets of two because they're different offices. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the that. signage officer I'm getting on very well with at the moment. Um, the other, so not so much. And right. um, I'm not getting any answers to the questions. So um, Thank I you. might ask Tom to... Mm. To have the same premises in two different offices doesn't seem to me mm. very efficient. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Good point. So you can second it. Yes, Anthony. Yeah. All those in favour? That's the unanimous with the exception of probably yeah. one small point, Chair. We yeah. did at least get uh, the colour adjusted because I actually looked mm. up the blue colour and it's much more acceptable. The green yeah. blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Number five um, is the Shell, Shell Station in London Road, um, provision of electric vehicle charging hub and associated works. Um, again, Catherine's done a good report on that. Mm -hmm. um, how do members feel? Yeah, I've got no problem with that. No. no, we need things like that going. Yeah, welcomed. Yeah, it's um, for the site. For the station, so the normal vehicles, one will be for disabled. Yeah. And of course, these far back applications going through at the moment. So they've got the choice of either going across the road to shop mm. in Tesco or to the. Or Lidl. Yeah. Yes. Or they've got, or they can go to uh, McDonald's or they can go to the Shell station or they can go to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's actually quite well planned there. And as you see, it's, the fast charging is 10 minutes to 10 to 30 minutes. So. Yeah, good. So, everyone happy with that? I'm yeah. Yeah. Second. Yeah. No objections. All in favour? Thank you. Robin. Right, Market 19 Market Square. Um, Lloyd's Bank mm. building. That would be very interesting, Steve. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, <my> answer, yes. <laughs> um, this is an application for necessary repairs. It's not the structural changes proposed yeah. in the... Uh, Last year's application, which uh, yeah, I'm decided for the conversion of upper floors into flats. Um, there has been a lot of around about the banking hub. It's going to be opening quite soon in Buckingham. There's been stuff on Buckingham Facebook, but talk, talking to Howard he, and, and Warren, they said they rather seem to have jumped the gun. Howard, by the way, has taken over the uh, mm. responsibility from Warren to look after okay. progress in Buckingham banking hubs. Um, when we were talking about this today, a suggestion was made, of course, perhaps that the cash machine could go back in the building at some stage, maybe not in the same position, which is always straight into the sun. Mm. 
Um, how do members feel? All happy about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I propose that no objections. Second by Anthony, all in favour? Step Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dun Garage site, Urban Crescent. Number eight is 20 Woodlands Crescent. Householder application for a front replacement front porch, direction of a single story rear extension. Uh, and doing this means they've got to push the prefab concrete garage back a little bit to fit all this in. But uh, anyone, any comments on this? No, in that case, I propose that no, no objection. Second by Anthony, all those in favour? Thank you again. Robin abstaining. Number nine is 14 Sandhurst Drive, householder application for demolition of a conservatory and replacement bit. Putting this up on the screen. You like too much, Catherine. You're quite flat with babies. <laughs> right. This is 14 Sandhurst Drive. Yeah, so as you say, this, it's a three bedroom house. The garage was originally detached, but the passage was enclosed. And they want to give the port to gable roof, provide the living room, the dining room, etc. 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 I've got plenty of park, parking space there. Um, there's everyone happy with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I propose no objections then. Seconded by Anthony. All in favor, except for Robin. Thank you. Um, number 10 is Fort Injury Road, direction of fence and shed. This is retrospective. Mm -hmm. um, there's been quite a lot of issues over this one, um, mainly because it's in the flood plain, which even the flood officer didn't seem to appreciate it. Flood zone three, um, the fence they've erected and the new shed, they could, could be seen to be uh, impeding any flooding there and pushing it on elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, there is no thuds report, um, which Catherine drew to our attention. The, Suds officer down at Aylesbury, one Alex Totty, um, is consulted on but decided against providing comments for four applications, number four, Tindrick Road, Buckingham being one of them. Now, why a Suds officer would not want to comment on a development in a floodplain on a, in a property that does get flooded <laughs> is a bit beyond us. So I think we should go back to him or her, and we're not sure which. Sort of Alex, it is. Yeah, with Alex. It's part of the job description. <laughs> and they're getting paid to do a job. Sub's officer planning growth and sustainability. But how can they <laughs> refuse to do a job? <laughs> no sense. Yeah. That's not right. So there is a lot of confusion over this at the moment as well because part of the application does not cover what appears to be a new shed on the site. Even mm -hmm. though it's... It does cover the shed. It covers the fence from the Tinder Road wall. Yeah. It does not cover all the fencing inside the site. It's the fencing which inside. Which is with the ground and therefore won't allow flooding. Won't allow flooding to escape. Anything. Um, one of the things obviously we're still concerned about is the fence along the bridge wall. Mm. Although it's not actually listed the bridge, it is very much a heritage for Buckingham. It's yeah. in the conservation area. And of course, it's one of the main entrances to the town over the yeah. river. So we, it's in our power to object to that fencing. Uh, yeah. It's also in our power to object to the shed and uh, internal site fences, which could can block flood water. And as yeah. we know, there's been a lot of flooding in that area. They don't even mention December 2020. Um, mm in the applicants' sites. Of course, 2020 and 2007 extended as far as Nelson Street Junction yep. and along Nelson Street itself. So yep. there's, there's a lot wrong with this application still, and a lot of it hangs on the flood risk and, and sums reports. And mm. so I think They're denying that it's in flood They're saying it's in flood zone too. Yeah. Which it isn't. Mm -hmm. Their own maps in their own flood report yeah. So that it's dark blue, not mid blue. Yeah, flood zone three. And I'm thinking, how did you not read your own map? Yeah. 
So I propose then that we um we can't determine this until we have got much clearer information about the flood risk, about the suds issues, um, and send it back to them. But do we oppose it, but we may consider, reconsider once we've received further clarification to our questions? So actually oppose it to start with. To start to, with, yeah, but we, we, we might, might be more happy to change for that. So. Is that? Yeah, okay, we oppose this application, uh, but we'll be minded to alter our view if, yeah, Catherine knows the right wording. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seconded? Yep. Thank you, Anthony. All those in favour? Everyone except Robin? Thank you. We're doing well. Um, the following minor amendments. Oh, sorry, no, I missed that unit C. I missed that too. Jumping way ahead. 11 and 12 can be considered together. This is Well Street. It's the back of what used to be the pet shop there. Is it Meadows House? Um, and the application is the conversion of four bedroom, right? No, change of use of rear ground and upper floors into five self-contained flats. Um, you'll see there's quite a lot of space there in the back, there's a back courtyard with some listed buildings. You see the sash windows in um, Catherine's photographs there. I mean, one, one thing I, obviously we're very keen to preserve any listed buildings in the town and anything that, that does do that and saves them must be a good thing, not just Buckingham Society. Yeah, we've got um, <clears throat> no objection, but a few comments. Um, apparently, there's an urban budget loose in the outbuilding. <laughs> oh. And it's been seen on regular occasion. So, as it's a protected species, and we need to monitor the money bit, um, we would like to see an ecology study done. Mm. Um, not only for that, because then we also have been bounced. From the old building like that. And we'd also like to suggest that because it's a listed building and it's not going to be a uh, lot of heritage, may well be covered up in the outbuildings. So we'd like to see a, uh, an architectural building done uh, yeah. of the building prior to it being implemented. Architectural and archaeological. Whatever. <laughs> well, <laughs> archaeology can be somewhat um, uh, damaging to a building. Yeah, they, could, they, could, they could do a ground survey in the yard. So. You just want to know, you know, if there's anything there that's interesting, you can do a big part of the information. Um, but yeah, so not the noise issues, the parking seems to be adequate, but the use seems to be better. Because Bridge Street didn't actually exist beyond Bell Street in the day. It came down to Bridge, what is now Bridge oh, yeah, Street, Bell Street, and then across the fort. Yeah. So there's probably some interesting mm -hmm. stuff that we're going to need that. But you Thank you, Roger. Brown penetrating radar. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roger. You will notice the shop um, and the basement are not involved in this application. Even so, economic development have quick question the use of the storeroom um, or accommodation. So, 20 square meters. Yeah. And it's not part of the shop per se, it is just stored. Yeah. There are marked parking bays in the court now, but the intention is to offer the new flats about parking, which I did. We don't have to because it's a concept of accommodation. Mm. Um, so, what members feel that we, we approve it in principle, but take on board Roger's comments about yeah. badgers and any and bats, any any yeah. needs of archaeological study. Yeah. Archaeological. Mm. Yeah, archaeological yeah. and yeah. architectural, architectural heritage. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, I propose we that's that's how we do it. And exactly. Secondly, by Anthony, all those in favour, everyone except Robin. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then um, item thirteen. This is Unit C, Tindrick Road Industrial Park. This is the 
factory that had caught fire last year when mm -hmm. lithium or some batteries caught fire. Um, Total is to part repair and construction of the employment units, associated parking, landscaping, um, almost certainly for warehousing. A couple of points Catherine's picked up, the parking bays that they are showing on, for the new application are too small, going by the Buckinghamshire Council minimum standards, and the bus information is completely incorrect about where the closest buses are, and the yeah. frequency, etc. But I think generally, um, Anthony. Yeah, sorry to interrupt your flow. Um, if we check, if they change the size of the car parking spaces to fit current uh, local legislation, will there be sufficient car parking spaces for the size of building? Because I know there's a relationship between the number of um, required parking spaces compared with the square meterage of the building. I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I can just imagine. We put that to Catherine. At the moment, there is an oversupply. They've got more in calculation. Yeah, it's still a report. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and if it makes a significant difference. They have got more space they could put car parking in. You know, they could have the warehouse workers parking in the loading bay because there's plenty of space out there. Whereas the office workers can have the front. You yeah. know, then they're not crossing over and. Well, well, they can all cycle with 16 um, <laughs> cycles. Yes, they could get through. <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. I think the overriding thing about this, it's good, isn't it? We're seeing people still investing mm. in Buckingham yeah. and, and bringing new business, yeah. jobs, more jobs, etc. So I propose we accept this in principle. Yeah. We want those certain things yeah. again looked at. Thank you. Seconded by Anthony. All those in favour? Everyone except Robin. Thank you. Um, item 14, the following minor amendments, additional information you didn't receive, for information only, 39 Bernardines Way. It's not yet licensed as a high note, but it, the application is going through. And this is basically sorting out the amended plan details of bid and cycle storage um, and land registry document showing allocated parking. Thank you, Catherine, for going up and photographing the uh, parking spaces. That we yeah. There are a couple of spaces there, but they're not numbered, so they're not allied to the, uh, the rooms. And they're not showing enough bins. Was there something like the both bins to be provided for each unit? So there should be six blue and six green. Yeah. And there's only six. Right. We need to draw attention to that one, don't we? Yeah. Even though it's a no, for information only, we, we'll draw both those things in. The bins. This never bothered you before, never. I know. Sure. And the, you know, want the, the good idea to get the parking sorted out yeah. because yeah. the cars are going to finish up in the street blocking other people. Yeah. Um, thank you. Not in our parish. Land off Walnut Drive and Foscott Road, Lades and Norton. Um, this is the original 170 house application that was improved. And it was somewhat contentious, you will recall. Uh, Caps the Hardcastle from Maids Morton's office after additional re review, which unfortunately did not succeed. Uh, this is basically the submission of details to siting, design, external appearance, and landscaping. It's now reduced to 163 dwellings, so it's seven less than the original application. And the application did say up to 170, so they could, they obviously gave themselves a little bit of leeway. Um, Nothing else just to comment on, really. So. Can I point out that yeah. I did get a formal request for the traffic one, for the first one, this is the second one, which is something that's just internal to the site and nothing to do with us. But when we get to number 23, we were not formally requested to comment, even though it's on Avenue Road, which is our land. Um, <laughs> we will be making a point about that when we get to 23. Thank you. So, everyone happy with that? Yeah. Well, not happy, but yeah. Yeah, with seven less houses, which is probably the only good thing to come out of. But um, that's where the construction traffic is going to come in. Yeah, you've got that plan in front of you. That, so that's going to be on an angel. Yeah. So, that's what you can comment if you wish the um, highway access with the construction plan with all the construction access points. I mean, from all over. 
Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, Northamptonshire. I think the only one that really directly affects us would be the A422 junction at College Farm, which um, has always been a bone of contention, and they've dealt with it in a way that's not going to ease the traffic at all. Roger. I was just saying about the traffic. Um, could you it might be working on how we're going to enforce that? Yeah. Because they, they always say this is the plan, and they never work out because whoever's driving will take a shortcut. Yeah. And there was a, an issue with that I get dealt with a little more with, and they say this was a solar car, which was abused. And they were saying that they're going to come all the way there and get in the And we thought that if supplies are coming from the other cables, they're just going to come the other way. Yeah. They're not. The driver isn't going to go five or yeah. six minutes after the day. So I would suggest this more to them how that would be more to them in the courts. Good point. Yeah. Thank you. There isn't this monitoring, isn't there, part of the Section 106 agreement? Yes, but as Roger says, I mean, they are insisting that all the construction of traffic comes down from Whittlebury yeah. to Aitley, and it makes more in that way. Mm -hmm. But I can't see what's going to stop it coming from the A M1 South. No. 1421 or 422. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's a good point to raise. Yeah. Can we leave that to you to raise Catherine? I expect so. <laughs> um, do you want me to say anything about the college lane or, or the top end of college lane where the traffic nets are? Uh, Throwing us well, onto the Morton Road and into us. Well, uh, outside the church, where they? Yeah. They're, they're going to squeeze it in, into one lane just, just to net or to narrow it enough that people will not want to use it as a rat run, just, just outside well, the church. Given, given the cues that they predicted if ordinary traffic went down college, they mm. no they refused to go no way onto the road. They were going to have tailbacks of something like 15 to 20 mm. minutes. Yeah. Well, the alternative is to come down Morton Road and into town, and we all know how free flowing that is. Yeah, well, we can point to our letter that we're going to keep on the extra report. <laughs> come. Mm -hmm. Right, so members, agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I propose then that's the. Tack return, actually seconded. All those in favour, everyone except Robin. Thank you very much. Um, another lot of consultation. This is um, limited development rights, 47 Wayne Close. It's the erection of a single story road extension, which would extend beyond the rear wall of the original house by four metres, which the maximum height would be 3.3 metres. It does actually um, replace an existing conservatory. So, members all happy with that? Yep, yep. You'd like to speak? Yeah, I was just going to point out what an interesting piece of uh, brickwork artistry there is on that front elevation. Mm -hmm. And as I seem to be mentioning, nice brick elevations in every meeting now. <laughs> keep up the plan. We draw Roger's attention to that. It's on page 54 of the report. And again, it's like your party thing last time. It's the most really do enjoy the work. <laughs> this was Bill McDowell's church. I don't know if I remember them. Yes. But Catherine's photograph is very, very clearly. Oh, yeah. There's a Juliet balcony and above it. Quite an attractive feature. Yeah. So, again, yeah. something for the design guide, perhaps. They were good builders. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. There's no site notice because it's some um, committed development rights, so neighbours may not know. But um, item 17, 43 Treefields has been withdrawn, but it's been replaced by a similar application. But we won't get that for our next planning committee, so we can okay. pass on that one. Yeah, it's um, a copy application, I think, yeah. the new one. All right, but it missed the cut of the agenda. Mm. <laughs> um, not for consultation again. Three works. Um, number eighteen, Land of Brooks Court, Well Street, Acacia, thirty percent ground reduction. That's already been approved. Um, number nineteen, Lambwin House Avenue Road. Um, that's English oaks and other trees. That has been approved 
everybody as well after uh, we had an email consultation. And they have actually agreed, well, trick tree office, when the approval was given, um, the scope of the reduction was reduced and also information about nesting season was added to the conditions. So that's, that's a little plus for us. Um, 20 is Maids Morton Avenue, rear of 24 Highlands Road. Uh, three ball thorns, which are ivy covered, leaning on the fences, rear of 24 Highlands Road. Um, Neil Passmore, our tree officer from Buckingham Council, says the trees are likely to regrow from stump. So that hasn't been approved yet. Has it? Yes, I said all four. Oh, all, all, sorry, all four, that's right. The, the, okay. the other three came in late on Friday. All right, so. okay. And then finally, then uh, 21 Watchpoff Drive. Um, land to the side of the garden of 15 Morton Drive. That's a sycamore tree with major dead wood, and that's been yeah. fell to the ground. Again, Neil Passmore has overseen that, and we do trust him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. well, there's a lot of maple related sycamore maples and what have you in Major Morton Avenue, and it's such a market, one of these things that gets around. Um, number 22, again, for information, and this is Silverstone Park. It's an application to vary. The SO 106 obligation, number of clauses. We did actually raise a number of questions about this. Least of all, uh, why weren't we consulted about it? As we are. We found out about it because Warren asked why we haven't replied. Um, and I said, because they didn't bother to tell us. The fact that Silverstone is one of our designated employment areas. Right. Right? Um, we weren't consulted about it, neither were the landowners or the land. Um, Uses um, the farmers across Stowe, uh, the farmers um, um, to the north of Stowe, the owners of um, um, Black Pit Estates, um, the Pullins, the Wheelers, all Pullins, those farmers. Wheelers, yeah. um, um, Chris Whitehead, yeah. who um, farms in the parkland um, at Stowe. Um, have had no consultation or notification um, about this because um, I asked them. <laughs> <laughs> and um, speaking to Barry Smith on Saturday at Celebrate Buckingham, um, the National Trust's um, view on it is it's not a cycleway, it is a green route going through the parkland. Right. And we were sure that all landowners involved were in the consultation and blah, blah, blah. And blah. Robin, thank you. Frank. I have to um, agree wholeheartedly 100% with the statements made by Councillor John Davis. Um, they are accurate. What do you think we need to do, um, which is any consultation, is right to the officers who are dealing with second number 106. And ask them before they sign an agreement, have they got a surety that they can actually use the money? Because if they haven't got um, leeways and um, easeways and agreements, that this may take some civil time to extract those agreements from all the parties, in which case the developer, um, if they vary the section 106 to accommodate this. That they ferried it without due diligence, and and, and, and as Councillor Davis said, we need to take assurance because this is a big part of the green infrastructure for Buckingham, and um, and it's been we heard at full council when um, I my statement at full council was, are you sure that it's as good as you say it is? Because um, I haven't seen the um, of it, so I think we need to write them because if they're not aware of it and they go and sign an agreement and then they can't actually get the money out, the developer will probably um, be clapping he or she's mm -hmm. hands, won't they? Because they won't get it in. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Not the agreement being signed. We were trying to look at section one as it being signed. I have to confess, Rob, I don't know. What well, I do. Yeah, it's a huge thing or something like that. Every landowner affected has to sign the agreement. Oh. So, so it can't until 106. So they're going to put it through for this for a garden. 
Which they need to meet as part of the section 106. But do you agree, Roger, that we ought to write to the planning committee to make them aware of our concerns? Because well, yeah, whoever's doing the 106, you need to raise it again. So mm. this, you know, these people need to I did this. raise it in a meeting with them, but I was full of so many experienced people in that meeting. Well, I think we need to write to council. Yeah. yeah, because it, it's like anything. It's, you, you can't you can't have anything in the agreement which isn't fully legal. Mm, yeah. So yeah. even though they're not, they wouldn't be charged for money for the agreement. It's going across their land, mm. so they they need to be part of the agreement. Otherwise, you don't have to pay the money. You can't build it. Yeah. And the money goes back there, so you've lost the can. I had correspondence with Councillor White and he assured me that the National Trust was in, in full agreement with the cycleway across their land. So yeah, they probably will be, but yeah. it needs to be legally binding. Yeah. Fran, you wanted to. Um, so, yeah, the, the other thing that Barry Smith said um, was that um, the route hasn't actually been um, finalised. Um, and I was quite concerned that um, um, there was Facebook posts going up um, in the last couple of weeks, um, basically saying it's a done deal. Um, this, is, right. this is what's going to happen. Um, so I think what we need to do is the problem is to say that it's being brought to our attention that yeah. the landowners may not yet have um, been consulted. Yet to, yeah. Because once it gets north of Dadford, of course, that, that's where your whole problems. We raised the question about all the campsites. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's also I'm like Blackpit Estates. I'm like the, it's it's a, um it's not only is it a farm, it's it's the base of the um um Buckingham Group and Ace Plant Hire. Yeah. Um to be going straight through the middle of there mm. um is, is a security a risk yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Plus, when they've got the camping and events, so yeah, the security, you can really get the tickets. So, what yeah. people wanting to yeah. cycle from Leicester to London going to do? Yeah. Can I just add one more phrase that you yeah. can put into the letter? Having not been consulted on the active travel plan, would this route theoretically be part of the active travel plan, um, which is Buckinghamshire's ambition? I think they, they see just quote that they were going to do an active travel plan in public domain. I think it would be well in your rights to ask them whether um, is, this is envisaged to be part of the active travel plan. Um, because um, they may well say we're not ready to tell you about that. Um, they might not want to tell you about that. But I should, I, should, I, should, I should include it because an active travel plan was meant to be the cycle route through Buckinghamshire. So, you know, this green infrastructure to find people and um, it would seem logical if the active travel plan came to Buckingham that it would go through here and up there. So. Okay. Thank you. So the chronology of this was that <laughs> when we discovered about this, thank you, uh, thanks to Council White, Catherine managed to get an extension for us to make a reply, which we, we sent an email. They came back with an answer, answered four of our five points. But... um. Doesn't mean we can't still see, we can still go back, can't we? And so we, new information has come before us. Yeah. Raises concerns. So if we catch it in those terms, that's what I propose we do then, that we oppose this yeah. until, yeah. Um, until, until these matters yeah. are, yeah. Yeah. are confirmed. Thank you. Yeah. Just second yeah. that. Seconded yeah. by Anthony and those in favour. Everyone accept well, Thank you very much. Right. Um,
Well, it's at the end of the planning now. This is a brief report I'm going to give you on the. This is a meeting that myself, just checking here. Right, Catherine and myself attended a meeting that made, that made Morton called by the parish council as a public meeting about Scotts Lane Fields application. I just read to you my, my very brief report. In 2019, Buckingham Town Council, along with Maids Morton Parish Council, opposed the development of 170 dwellings off Walnut Drive, but it was approved by Strategic Sites Committee. There are 411 objections from a village of 514 residents. Subsequent judicial review failed to overturn the decision. We opposed it because of the strains which that development put on our own town infrastructure, increased car use in an already congested Buckingham, a further strain on the local infrastructure, including health services, education, leisure facilities, and town centre shopping and parking. I attended the meeting with Catherine and Anthony, as I said, and I told the meeting that although Buckingham Town Council had not yet seen this application, being outside our parish, if it followed through its opposition to the Walnut Drive development, then it was likely to oppose this one for 15 houses in Scotts Lane Fields, which are on the boundary between our parishes. This would add another 107, this would add another 15 dwellings to the 177 recently approved in the village, and a further 130 off the Morton Road which has yet to be finally approved while the Secretary of State is deliberating on whether or not to call it in. All told, this square mile of North Bucks could be looking at 322 new dwellings, which using Buckinghamshire Council's occupancy average of 2.5 people per household would mean 805 new residents. And assuming that each household has at least one car, and some two, that could be another four to 500 cars using Morton Road in and out of Buckingham every day. Buckinghamshire Highways, in its report, brushed off the site as, quote, somewhat sustainable in transport terms and would not be overly reliant on the use of the private motor vehicle. Wow. Mm -hmm. Even though they granted that there was only one bus a day, one down to town and one back at nine o'clock, which is too late for school children, mm -hmm. and one back again at midday, which is too early for everybody else. The closest shops are too far to walk to, and if cycling, the return journey laden with shopping is up a steep hill. Scotts Lane Fields is a conservation area and a protected area in the emerging Maids Morton neighbourhood plan. And it's used by many residents of both Maids Morton and Buckingham, forming a narrow buffer between the town and the village. And it's important that these settlements retain their individuality. Buckinghamshire Council has confirmed there's no unmet housing need in either despite the applicant's claims. Although we're not a statutory consultee of this application, I propose that we oppose it on the above grounds. Oh. That's my proposal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Now a second round to me. Oh, yeah. 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 like to talk on this. Right. right, straight to the vote. Okay. All those in favour, thank you. And so I think, uh, one of the things that the conservation, I mean, it was a very well attended meeting for a time, isn't it? We pointed out that they had done the ecology survey on a small area in the middle of the grazed grassland. They hadn't considered the hedgerows, the trees, or the ponds. However, one gentleman said that he had a pond in his garden, which was absolutely heaving with great crested newts, which is good news for everybody because we can have a think about it. Martin asked if we haven't got an electronic copy of that, you know, so and so have your report. Yeah, I'll give it to Paula. So I always even email it to her. Okay. So thank you. She's got that. Um, Robin, um, at the meeting this afternoon, uh, you said we should also perhaps suggest there should be an SF 106 contribution to the Buckingham Transport Strategy. I think we can agree the account for we voted on that before and voted on it again. Yeah. We have voted on it. Yeah. Okay, with the case, yeah, I, I think that it would be sensible and prudent to ask for a contribution to the Buckinghamshire uh, Transport Strategy inside the transport strategy mm -hmm. um, to them because it is a number of houses which you think agree will contribute plus in the sense that um, it will play into the concerns which have been expressed in Maysmore and it's 
proximity to the um, tariff boundary. For the point of information, I have wrote to them on um, last week, and I had acknowledged that my correspondent yet asking that it should go to the committee on the grounds of lack of consultation and, um, and with the neighbouring parish and one or two other things that I wrote to them. But um, <laughs> but, um, I haven't had acknowledgement of that yet, um, but I do think it is. It is it's, it's a key development area. Those who remember the Mays Morton Road three Mays Morton Road one application. When in when Mays Morton Road one application was agreed in twenty twenty two, twenty two or whatever. Um, it was um, in the report, the inspectors report. It cited in that thing um, that there was no recognition. Of Mays Morton as a separate um, combination. I think that this is will confirm that if they lose this, this um, it isn't discussed then about the future of that land in the sense that it is um, a green lung in, 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 in between <coughs> Mays Morton and it should be considered sensibly and not just doubt like um, under any. Um, application because he wants the principle of that have gone. Um, the inspector's report will be um, be finite because it stated there was no difference. Um, and I think um, that was a long time ago, wasn't it, Catherine? But it was what it said. Thank you for that, Robin. So, what I then propose then is that um, we, in addition, we ask that the comp section 106 contribution should be made to the Buckingham Transport Strategy. Yeah. Both that. Mm -hmm. yes. Second bounty. All those in favour? Thank you. Everyone except Robin. And finally, um, that Catherine will write when she's making this um, questioning why we were not yeah. in Suffolk mm -hmm. statutory consulting uh, because yeah. we are, we are the closest neighbour to the, yeah. mm -hmm. the development. Mm -hmm. That was the basis. We'll let you phrase that as you, as you wish. Mm -hmm. All those happy with the project. So I'm going to say there is. Two applications refused in 2007. And that's not, it's worth, they did go to appeal, but they were appeals. There was no appeals there, bone or something. Um, but on one of the things you'll find on the website is, a, is the committee report and the decision notes, and it's worth reading through them to look at the ones for reviews on what the attitude was then, because. In general terms, the policies haven't really changed. So I think it, if you read through Bernard uh, Daniels was absolutely through his committee report and the reasons that it was refused, always useful. Okay. I'll email you, I've got them start an email. Oh, yeah. uh, that's fine, Rob. Um, yeah. Nothing will be wrong anyway. Thank you very much, Rob. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for that. That was. That was Quite an interesting meeting. Um, just to add, while we're at that meeting, Greg Smith was amongst um, attendees, mm -hmm. and he told us that with regard to Wapham Road 3, 130 houses, um, which Buckinghamshire Council was minded to approve, he, you will recall, called it into the Secretary of State, Michael Gove, and he said he'd just heard from Mr Gove a couple of days before the meeting last Wednesday, saying that it was... It was about to make a decision on it, you know, it's actually on his list now. So, oh. so hopefully that will be decided one way or the other. Yeah. Well, so. Still haven't seen it on paper. Yeah. Yeah. Might get that by the end of the tour. Yeah. What we did have, of course, was that last November at council, we had Greg, Greg Smith's letter in the agenda. So we all had sight of that, but we've had no paper mm. since then. Yeah. Thank you. Um, right, planning decision. To see for information and details of planning decision, most of them are straightforward. Um, for Edging Lane on Lace Hill, a lot of conversion of roof lights and windows. We opposed it, but planning officer was minded to approve it. Mm. She said the roof lights were of an appropriate size, caused no harm to the uh, street scene. And um, she noted that Buckingham Town Council hadn't objected. To a similar application for 18 edging lane. Okay, yeah. But that was only roof lights which were set brush with the roof slope. Oh. 
they used to have two whopping great windows in each gable end, yeah. which is contrary to the planning conditions. For the estate. Condition nine. I'm pretty well <laughs> quoted off my heart now, Roger, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Why can that be overruled then? Well, yeah. well because she's a planning officer and she didn't give a monkey space. Yeah, but the plan officer surely is but the by, by rules. Well, yeah. that's, why, that's why I put the actual condition in our response, cut and pasted, so they can't say that I edited it or anything. Cut and paste the block and the reason for it. I'm still it's, yeah, it's not it's really in terms of planning generally. This, this, these conditions are still valid mm. and they are they are yeah. Yeah. with the estate. So in which case, they should form part of any policy, otherwise the policies become extinct mm. by... Um, Which is basically made yeah. the thing void by agreeing yeah. to something well, that... Yeah. Set of yeah. So the president just has the one... No, I think it, 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 it might, the president. might be worth seeking clarification mm. of the reasons. Right, 41 Aston, Western Avenue, we opposed the replacement garage because we said the garage was going to be too narrow inside because it would have buttresses. Mm. Um, highways subjected exactly the same we did, uh, but we were both overruled. Wow. I said, no, it can be in the footprint. Um, Station House Road, sorry, Station House and Chindrick Road, we opposed the eight new houses, that's been refused again. Um, and otherwise, a bit, everything was fine that we opposed. Apart from 19 Bridge Street, um, discharge of condition, you remember that they're proposing what was more or less a tarmac car park in front of the building, yeah. not landscaping it. But it has been partially um, discharged. Um, conditions 8 and 10 have not been discharged. More planting is required and sufficient bin storage for two really bins per flat. Has been uh, made a condition. And they will have to reapply. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, Catherine? Just going back to Bernadine's way, we've only got one really good uh, household. Mm. So, and only two parking spaces for six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It bothers me, you see, that that car park is not even marked in the bed. So it could yeah. be an absolute for all. Yeah. Mm. Um, item 11 2, planning inspector at the appeal against refusal of side extension to five of the villas in Stratford Road. Is the inspector has dismissed the appeal. Mrs. Robinson sent me a lovely she? Excellent. Lovely Monday's events, of course. I just reminded everyone how serious the flooding could be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sue, did you want to say something? Sir? No. Oh, just. <laughs> Um, the other appeal um, has been lodged against refusal for extensive refurbishment of 55 Well Street for Mr. and Mrs. Olex. They've, um, this was turned down. It included um, alterations to roofing, walls, flooring, windows, doors, interior and exterior finishes and flood barrier at the back. Um, gave you reasons this afternoon just trying to find Yeah, it's lovely, wasn't it? I think it's near the bottom in the main. Yeah, it's getting. Um, Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I found it. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. So the main complaint is summarised as, this is from the Erlixes, there appears to be a local planning authority reluctance to accept the benefits of comprehensive repairs when faced with the obvious evidence of decay and slow failure. The roofs have visible signs of bowing, fallen tiles and decayed eaves, but these failings appear to be welcomed by the LPA as signs of character and charm <laughs> and the basis for demanding inactivity rather than repair. That's going to be the ground. Lovely line. line. So there are a few. Wait, so well, moves in a mysterious way. 
Um, I think I have to start with all the planning matters. Uh, back in for council matters. Um, Robin, do you have any? Yeah, just to say, um, I've been to several meetings in the sense that um, you will be aware of, and the chairman made me aware this day actually. The, the, um, there's a report going to the transport and environment committee on Thursday. Remember, we all raised our concerns about the um, sewage and the fact that the legislation hasn't actually mm. made it. Now, it appears from the report that Councillor Martin Tett has written to the Secretary of State, um, pointing out what we found out through going to Cabinet and asking the questions, um, which we did. We went and asked the question about our concerns, didn't we, that um, the, the legislation about grounding mm -hmm. conditions and um, whatever. So it appears these answers. So um, I put a question in which the officer hasn't actually agreed yet. Probably thank you for letting me part this evening. Um, and um, and um, because I do think that we need to get some variance on that. On the other thing to back up to council, I did mention earlier, I think that maybe we need to sit down and think which parts of it. Um, when it comes to the um, the way the health authority is going to be looking at um, growth and in infrastructure and their integral and strategic plan. I think that maybe um, rather than go into it tonight, it's very long, but we need to sit down and look at it and see and pull out of it which parts of it are going to be for the planning committee to look at and which parts of it will probably go to the environment committee, which um, Councillor Fran Davis is there, because um, it will be key on the way that they're the strategic plan and where they're going to plan uh, services in Buckingham. Some of them um, in, in the whole of the uh, valley. So I think that's something that I'd like to sit down and then so that we silo it correctly. And um, I have been on a couple of occasions to um, question around. Um, in their integral plan, how they're going to deal with, um, um, it's not really here, but it, it has started now, is to do with one thing that I keep following up with special educational needs. And um, and I went to two afternoon, one morning meeting and one afternoon meeting, two different lots to try and verify that. I'm still um, convinced they're going to do something not in the time frame which is going to make a great difference. So I do think it's some of the like we are looking at planning education and we are looking at what we do. So my view is that maybe through our officers, we could ask whether there is some way that we can actually um, in, in education actually cite it, particularly in relation to these um, clinical commission group, or whether we can actually cite it in relation to future development. Because we do have a site in Winslow, which um, does its darndest um, indicator for this. So maybe it's something we should look at um, another day to know whether we can actually cite it because it's clear its contributions and placements to do this are going to be key. If in our development that we have, we can say that it needs to be an additional thing that we put in, it will generate money and maybe actually start to help some of these people. Um, their families um, not be waiting for the HC report for two years and um, maybe get their education moved on. But I think it's been a long evening, that'll probably do. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, I'm Thank just going back to your first point about um, Council Leader Tet and Foul Water Connections. This is obviously very um, much in our mind at the moment, very zero way development, where they yeah. want to put the drain yeah. straight down through the industrial estate down into, into the A421. The council said in his letter did say um, to the Secretary of State, as you will all be aware, water companies have a legal obligation to provide developers of the right to connect to a public sewer. And furthermore, Section 91 of the Water Industry Act makes it impossible for water companies to object or for the council to refuse the grant of planning permission for development on the grounds that no improvement works are planned for a particular area. So that continues to be a big concern. And, uh, I could I suggest that we um, 
Um, I mean, I think it's he's doing the right thing, and he said it in his response to our cabinet question, which I looked from this committee, which was a concern we had. So I think it would be um, good to actually write and say that we've read his letter, um, and um, we're appreciative of it, and we wish him every success in convincing the minister there's a problem with sewage. Um, noting the ministers have to do with sewage in the media. Um, but um, 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 and perhaps it hasn't always came up trumps when it comes to sewage. And, um, and um, I think there was another thing the other day about, um, what's it, one person said that um, it's all the problems are down to people doing um, swimming in rivers, I think. Um, um, if they were swimming in rivers, they were no, But I think, I think we, we, ought to, we ought to, when I propose that we write to them, because yep. I think it, it's always good to build a relationship. That this is something that we ask to come yep. have in it. Mm. In our letter that we, it was raised with the local Buckinghamshire Council, we brought it to yep. cabinet, it's close to and we're glad to see that you're following it up, and we'll be interested in your response. Good. And I think that's a good way of doing it. It shows that we're not always... Everyone, everyone agree with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Obviously, the meeting's not for Thursday. So. No, but the letter's in the public domain now. Yeah, but probably best to wait until he's actually spoken on it. We've got no guarantee he's spoken on it. Thank you. Um, anything else, Robin? No, I think no. I said I've been done. I'm Good. Here. Thank you very much. Um, 12 to it, proceed for information. Slides from the April town and parish court meeting are a bit late. Apparently, they did apologise. Yeah. Them. They did. Yeah, it's the same. Um, item 13 updates. Sorry. The town clerk circulated a thing from the yeah. yeah. about training. Yeah. Now, it's hidden in there is what looks awfully like the quarterly meeting, for which they are charging a fee, but it's going to be in person at the gateway. Now, I've got to, got to try and pin something down about this because. If it's supposed to be a quarterly meeting for parishes, mm. yes, obviously it's free if it's a silly one, but it's getting so unhandy. I mean, you're getting 80 odd parishes attending. You cannot deal with 80 odd in one meeting. Mm. But I don't think that it ought to go into the chargeable training. Yeah, definitely problem. not. <laughs> so is it okay if I go back to. Uh, yeah, please so, do. We is this the quarterly meeting? Why have you hidden it in the training schedule? Yeah. Um, we're not going to pay a count to come anyway. Thank you. We have been yeah. pushing to stop these online meetings. As Catherine says, mm -hmm. 18, I've twice written to the uh, BM account to say this is not acceptable. You know, you can't you can't see who's there, you can't have any interchange yeah. with uh, people. And eventually they said, well, our, our annual meeting is the next one. So yes, perhaps we could. Do it there, and we can have a discussion there. But it's never suggested that it's a charge for it. We could look into that. Thank mm -hmm. you. What a charge to watch somebody in, yeah, like Sky. Well, it's if, if they're all over the town parish charter, and we're lovely to the town parishes now, and we're going to have meetings on a regular basis and keep you up to date. I think to turn around and then say, Oh, by the way, it's going to cost you. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. Gonna, yeah. We've all got to drive to Aylesbury. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could I suggest that the, um, if you read the parish, it's meant to be a live document. Um, <laughs> our live is a matter of discussion, um, but it isn't in the actual agreement, which is the charter. And um, yeah. this is a deviation of the document. If so, what which committee or, or, did, or, or cabinet members' decision change it? Well, it's the a decision notice that you can't do anything in a local file without a decision notice. There has to be a decision notice for this charge. If they want to charge them for somebody has to have made that decision. Yeah, let the captain find out first of all. They just closed. They didn't publish this. Yeah, Thank you. Um, updates from representatives on outside bodies. Anyone else? No. Thank you. Item 14, Buckinghamshire Council Committee Meetings. Um, these are the past ones. 31st of May was cancelled. So 28th of June, we haven't got to it. It's been cancelled on strategic sites. No Buckingham applications. Enforcement. Report any new breaches? Tonight. Thank you. 
Um, rolling lists of updates. Thank you, Catherine. Tree felling, land grab reports, calling requests, IMO licenses. IMO licenses, as you know, haven't been updated since January, so okay. we don't know how many are out there in the town that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, I can, sorry, Robin. Can I suggest that we discuss the principle of um, <laughs> as Catherine will well recall that the reason mm. that we ended up with HMOs in district was because we asked for Article 4 directives and the district eventually um, amended the motion for Article 4 directives to, a, to licensing. And licensing is, I think that it would, as we came up with the idea pretty much, and it went to the our district council, and I'm not sure what they did in the South, I can't speak for them. Um, but um, that we should ask them whether they feel they're being open enough and transparent enough about the information because it should be it should be a free flowing piece of information that, 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 that we know that people need HMOs um, and that when they get people find out retrospectively that they've got an HMO and we find out that this it becomes a point of um, injection and you mm -hmm. get angry. Um, if we have a proper conversation about HMOs and they were to update us on a more regular basis, it would fit in with the charter and it puts their own charter, which is paragraphs to give another name to whatever. Did you propose a letter to town clerk? Yeah, yeah, I think it had to be wrote factually correct yeah. around the charter. Because well, I reckon that. Yeah. Because, it, because we're, we're, gonna, we're just going to be seconded. Yeah, we're going to we're, we're have lots of abuse and it, we don't need it. Catherine will know the wording. All those in favour? Thank you. That's everybody, including Robin. Thank you. Um, quarterly updates, spreadsheet. Thank you very much, Catherine. No comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, matters to report any damage, superfluous, redundant signage in the town, access issues, or other urgent matters. We discussed it earlier, those signs were drinking. I was the meeting before. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Mr. Kingston is on, on a weekly basis about the black guys from the road and that. Yes. Yeah, you'll be aware of it. You'll be aware of a lot of damage after the um, flash flooding last Monday, lots of low roads lifting up, Page, yeah. Bottom and Page Hill, um, and there are other areas in the town, a lot of drains were lifted, and luckily most of them went back in place. But uh, when you look on um, Fix My Street, everything does seem to have been reported, but nothing's been done. So. Oh, all members' right. information, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know where the Whitnall's Oak playground is on the riverbank? Mm -hmm. Part of that riverbank has failed oh. and exposed an electric cable. Oh. So we couldn't raise the emergency number, could we? Between no. us. No, no, we tried. So I did it via Fix My Street, even though it's not a street, and, you know, oh. and they have transferred it to open spaces. Right. Uh, all we wanted before Saturday, obviously, um, was for somebody to do, put a bit of fencing around it so yeah. the children who didn't charge straight out of the playground fell in the river. Mm. Um, I must have been down there taking a photograph of it. It was Mr. Rooney who burned it in there. I'll bet you not. The, 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 the guy was mowing the, the riverbank itself. And he, he, he'd swept around his elders and gone straight into the cavity. Wow. So he was quite pleased that I went with my parts at him and told him about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say really that um, I don't see that the new contractors for Buckinghamshire Council are actually um, doing anything really <laughs> apart from going and painting some white lines around some potholes. Um, <laughs> at, least, at least after the white lines were painted around the potholes, um, with the previous contractors, they actually came and put some um, shredded wheat and treacle in the holes. Um, they don't seem to be doing anything at all with them. Um, they have fulfilled Councillor Marky's wish for proper markings on the car park. Yeah. They painted all the time. They painted the tarmac. Yes, yeah, yeah. they made new tarmac and then put paint on I, 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 just, just, I know it's not, not in... in um, the parish that's um, covered by this council, but outside my house, um, I, I went back and looked at it again. 
um, pothole that I reported on the 24th of March, which oh, was prior to the, um, the um, new contractor coming in, it was marked up by the previous contractor um, and nothing was done for ages. Um, and then they did come and put some, some stuff in it. It's still, it's, they've come out again and marked up a, a, a larger area. Um, they've, um, they've made it so that I can't put any further updates on that, on that report. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, the hole is getting bigger. There, there, there is no roads left there. It, it is, the, there's bits of the substructure which are now coming out. Wow. Um, but I know that I do notice that coming, coming down West Street is terrible. Yeah. Outside Lloyd's Bank is terrible. Um, and as for um, this, again, this is out, outside of this council's control, but um, North Ants, have resurfaced bits of the um, the dual carriageway in front of Silverstone and Circuit, but it stops at the border. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time for the Grand Prix. Thank you. Um, <laughs> finally, Chairman's items of information. We just ought to mention that Buckinghamshire Council is the winner of the 2023 Planning Awards. Back into planning environment services. Um, yeah. Do you know we've got much the same reaction in those models? I, I actually um, emailed. I found found the company that had, had won the planning awards, and I emailed them and said, "I can only I can only assume that nobody else entered." Very unfair. Um, they were up against Birmingham City Council. Mm -hmm. um, but ABDC got the highly commended bit of it on the notice board so that I have a laugh every time. <laughs> I think it's helpful, but no, they actually, actually won it. I mean, of course, a lot, part of that's enforcement. You have been doing a, a very good yeah, job. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have to say that if it was the enforcement, they got it through enforcement, mm. they have to have their own credit for that actually starting yes, enforcement. Yes, they've got 14 on enforcement. But, but I think that um, I can't comment on anything to do with planning because we never have a meeting. But, um, <laughs> um, so it's difficult. But I go to lots of training. I'm the most trained and attended counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so trained. So the final item tonight is this. Do we wish to congratulate them? No. As no. 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 Sue Hetherington is our Sorry. new planning committee member. Thank you. Sue. <laughs> I hope you learned a lot tonight. Uh, yeah. No other announcements. <laughs> so we have to put you on. Date of our next meeting, month to date more then, Monday, the 17th of July. And with that, at 10. No, 9 51.